Welcome back as we continue to go over my prospect rankings for the 2022 NFL Draft Class. And today we're talking about the corner position. And I can almost guarantee that in my top 10, I'm going to be missing one or two of your guys. So let me know who they are in the comments section below. Because obviously I hate them. But uh, what's crack a lack and it's your boy Broshmo, just in case you didn't know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football discourse. And as always, if you want to see my full positional rankings, my full big board, go check out the Patreon. I got a link in the description below. On top of that, obviously, ton of videos coming out this week. Got a big collab happening. Um, I think that'll come out Friday, so... Yeah, be here for that. Let's go ahead, do the nitty-gritty on my corner list. Number 10, Marcus Jones. Not Mike Jones, Marcus Jones out of Houston. You look at that size and you'd be like, what the? Ugh. But I'm a sucker for a good slot corner. And on top of that, he might have probably the best return skills in this class. Uh, and I say I'm a sucker for a, for a slot corner because... Okay, I know. He primarily played on the boundary. But look at the size. 5'8", 185. He's going to be a slot in the NFL. Now, he's a trans he transferred from Troy in 2018. Uh, and obviously, at his size, yes, he's going to be playing the slot. Uh, and he's played uh, over... I'm trying, duh, 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 duh. Here we go. 518 snaps in the slot compared to his... Almost 1,200 on the outside. Doesn't surprise me that they want to play him on the outside. He's such a just a fluid athlete with his um, with just with his hips, uh, his transitions, um, coming out of breaks. Like he, he's solid. On top of that, you gotta love the ball skills. Knows for a football. Ten interceptions, 28 pass breakups through his career. On top of that, solid tackler. No kidding. 7.6% missed tackle rate, which should help him translate or transition to the slot. He has some legit short area quickness. Obviously, at that size and his play strength, you're going to be concerned about his tackling. Hadn't been an issue in college football, so hopefully that's something that won't be an issue in the NFL. Uh, in terms of him, and this is the thing. If we just stopped there, he probably would have been like an early day day three prospect for me. But it's just his return skills are so legit. It's the ice on top. He has six kick returns, three punt returns, all for touchdowns through his career. Um, he did have four muffs on punt returns in his freshman season. But since then, only one. So not half bad. Uh on top of that play strength of uh, being a concern, it becomes more of a concern. Oh, how will those ball skills translate? Him attacking the catch point at that size. Those are just obvious concerns that come with size and strength concerns. But th I think this dude's going to be a fabulous slot player. And yeah, dude, I'm a big fan of his game. And I thought I was going to be a Demarion Williams guy coming out. And man, no, it's Jones. It's B. Jones. At number nine, Tariq Woolen. At a, how do you say it? UTSA. I was going to say Utah State. That ain't it. UTSA. It's in Texas. That ain't in Utah at all. So he made Bruce Feldman's freaks list for his speed. 4.3 uh, is his projected 40 time currently. At his size, that's pretty freaking amazing. The physical tools are tantalizing. Just look at the size. 6'3", 205. Uh, let me see. I want to see if I put his yeah 33 and a half inch arms like this guy nobody's beating this guy in press matter of fact let's talk about the senior bowl for a second because nobody was beating him in press coverage it was it was when he was asked to go and play off the line of scrimmage that oh wow things are kind of iffy there because like uh he's not the most fleet of foot guy just straight up he's it's just not him and like if he faces a quicker uh more shifty receiver especially if they're like break into the uh middle of the field like you you saw him hold like blatantly it was terrible like it, it it was pretty bad it was pretty bad i think he's gonna be he's a press guy press whether it's zone whether it's um man that's gonna be his role in the nfl 
But over the last two seasons, he has allowed a completion rate of 56.9% for five for almost 600 yards and six TDs. The ball skills have been on display during that time. Two interceptions, 10 pass breakups. He's shown a good awareness and um, just processing when undercutting um undercutting routes and basically when he like break uh when he drops into like maybe uh a cover two or a quarters uh type of zone where he kind of like has to and they give him a high low option he's good at actually uh reading the quarterback and breaking towards the ball but this guy is a linear athlete through and through that's just what he is he he isn't explosive outbreaks if they if it's going to take him laterally but if it's like Literally, and even he's a bit stiff with flipping his hips, but not terrible. But yeah, he's not going to be explosive out of breaks at the top of routes. He's a guy that has to get his hand. I, I'm assuming has to get his hands on receivers. Ah, uh, and you kind of worry about how handsy he gets. Like he feels like a developmental prospect at this point. It's just the physical tools are just out the wazoo. I like the short area, quicks, size, length. It's impeccable. Number eight, Martin Emerson out of Mississippi State. He's probably one of my favorite prospects coming in this class. Uh, the dude's been shut down in the SEC throughout his whole career. Uh, he ended 2020 with 12 pass breakups. Uh, he only had two pass breakups this past season, but he only allowed 29 receptions for 350 yards on 44 targets. Uh, the dude, he while he isn't the sp- speediest athlete it's it's length man like speed and explosiveness is going to be a real concern but this guy's length how he process uh processes the field it's i think it's start now like if you're a zone heavy coverage scheme then you're gonna value this guy because under zach arnett the dc there at mrs uh mississippi state he's played a variety of different zone concepts there but this cat, man, 23 defensive stops in 2020. In 2021, he was just as good. He might be the one of the best tackling corners in this class. He's not afraid to come up and play the run, uh, attacking the catch point with that type of length. He, I love his physical brand of football, and he's not overly like handsy, which we were talking about, Tariq Wolin. He's not overly handsy. He, he uses his hands exceptionally well throughout the route. And he doesn't let uh, receivers really break too far away from him. Long speed, going to be concerned. Him keeping up with receivers outside of breaks, Will. He's a bit rounded at the top of his um, top of routes when having to make like a turn rather than, you know, that quick, w- w- rather than showing a little bit of suddenness. That's just not his game, but I'm a huge fan of Martin Emerson. Going to number seven, Kyler Gordon. Here at number seven, dude. Another guy that made Bruce Feldman's freaks list at the beginning of the season for his explosiveness and his agility. Uh, it sounds like he's going to be really good at the vert. It'll be interesting to see how he tests out uh, with the combine coming up. He displays a good change of direction and short area quickness. I like that. he um, His ball skills seem legit, man. He's constantly at the catch point. He allowed only a catch rate of 51 0.2% and two interceptions with six pass breakups. Keep in mind, he's playing opposite a Trent McDuffie. So, yeah, he was kind of the guy getting targeted there. You could still see a bit of inexperience, though, in this guy's in in coverage with him. Um, he do, Occasionally, he just doesn't trust his eyes. He is a bit late to react um, to, react in, to some... Uh, react into basically the play unfolded his athleticism though it makes up for a lot of that uh you're gonna love the physical traits the dude's gonna measure out great i'm sure he's gonna be lengthy uh you worry about the physicality i'd like to see him be a bit more physical throughout the route but uh kind of is what it is his discipline I put discipline and man coverage here. I mean, more so technique. He kind of opens up his hips a bit too early and is basically chasing the guy uh, within the first five yards, which, I mean, typically you want you want to keep that guy at bay. And, yeah, it's just 
he kind of he kind of he kind of seeds the line of scrimmage way too early, and just turns it into a like was a cat chasing a mouse type of thing. Uh, but he did play a bit of slot this year too, so you know he's kind of flexible in that regard. Uh, after their slot went down, oh, I'm trying to remember his name. I'm a big fan of the slot out of which uh, Washington. He's a former uh, Oklahoma transfer. Can't remember his name off the top of my head though, because he has like. It's three names, so. But, yeah, no, Kyler Gordon, man. It won't surprise me if he sneaks into the first round, but big fan. Roger McCreary coming here at number six. Still got a second-round grade on him, and a lot of that does have to do with, well, the length. He had, what, 29 and a quarter-inch arms. Listen, just historic, like, currently speaking, there's only there were only four corners last year that started on the outside with sub 30 inch arms and with the two most prevalent ones being cameron Sutton, which you could make an argument he's actually better as this like slot safety hybrid and dante jackson who's kind of been a roller coaster through his whole career so this just leads me to think yeah he's probably gonna be a uh gonna be a a slot guy at least early on in his career and might might end up just being uh that which there's nothing wrong with that i love slot i love slot guys there's there's a there's a reason why it's a starting position in the NFL, but I do think that hurt his stock uh, immediately there at the Senior Bowl, and it's a shame because he was easily the most well put together corner at the Senior Bowl. Uh, he was one of the most fluid athletes. It's just again that arm length. It's it's just saying you're kind of better on some of the like if you're if you're drafting this guy highly like first round. That's what I'm talking about. Um, then you're kind of betting on that they aren't, that they're the exception, that they're not, that they don't fit what typical standard is. Uh, I've mentioned that with Kenny Pickett and the hand size. You're really betting on that he might be the exception to what the what the current standard is, and just historically, like that's it's like. Uh, I don't know. I'm rather not bet on those type of guys in the first round. So, but I love this cat, dude. His press technique is great. Uh, he attacks the catch point exceptionally well. Like the tools aren't necessarily elite when it comes to like closing speed um, and burst initially, but. The dude's been productive in the SEC last two seasons. He's allowed 56 catches on 98 targets for only 700 yards and six touchdowns. It's a 57% completion percentage in the SEC. He has four interceptions, 15 pass, uh, pass breakups during that time. And he's having a banger. He had a banger of a year this past season with two interceptions, 13 pass breakups. And uh, he brought that catch rate down to 45.3. He plays the run exceptionally well. He like protects the perimeter pretty darn well. He limits gains. Um, missed tackle rate through his career, 11%. Pretty solid for a corner. His route recognition really just it, it kind of like justifies his ball skills and why he's able to contact, uh, contest and attack the catch point just consistently. His route and tip anticipation is exceptionally good he understands route tendencies what the team is going to run on certain downs as the game moves like goes on like he's good at that he was on the verge of having a shaky i think a shaky performance against jameson williams uh because i mean he had an incompletion that should have been a pass interference uh unfortunately it looked like he was having a lot of trouble dealing with the suddenness and stop start ability of Williams, but Williams got um, knocked out the game for a targeting call early, and then he just went on to like just mop the floor with John Mechie. Just he held Mechie at bay easily. He was responsible for um, an interception. He ended the game with four pass breakups. It was just a good outing for him. But yeah, I got him here at the top of the second round. Just simply because of, again, arm length, it's a thing. It's a thing. I'm just going to say it's a thing. At number five, I got Kyer Elam out of Florida. Got a first-round grade on him. Big fan of 
this man's game here trying to get to my notes one of the best coverage corners in college football he has good length exceptional ball skills six interceptions 15 pass breakups through his whole career while allowing a completion percentage of 46.4 he even held Devonte smith in 2020 to three catches 23 yards and no touchdowns while guarding him he plays a very physical brand of coverage and really just sits in the hip pockets of receivers there is this year it was a bit handsy it was i mean i think he had seven uh seven holding slash pass interference calls uh through 10 games this year and i think three of them came against samford of all teams not great doesn't have elite speed isn't an explosive player but he is a fluid player he is a smooth mover um He's very much improved as a tackler. After missing 13 tackles last season, he brought that number down to three. He loves to play run defense. Um, doesn't get hung up hung up if if a receiver tries to block him. He's like, dude, you serious? Get the heck out of my way. And they do. And and they do. And they do. Uh penalties were again, I, I kind of already talked about that i like the physicality but he needs to learn to be a little bit less physical and again that's something i think that translates a bit better having to teach a player uh particularly corners to be that are physical to be less physical than rather trying to take a guy who just his gay his brand of football just isn't physicality and trying to get them to be more physical it's at least seemed a bit harder um for those guys to like just do that uh at least in turn when uh as far as as long as i've been covering or at least going over the nfl draft i mean i think this goes back to like 2012 i it's that's just something i've noticed i say covering really i didn't start to like 2019 2020 but i've been I used, I used to have a blog back in the day. Let's not talk about it. Uh, it's embarrassing. I was a big James or uh, Jason Smith fan. If you don't know who that is, I'm glad. Uh, Andrew Booth coming here at number four. Some of y'all really like him, and I get it. He ended the year exceptionally hot. Uh, he does have a bit of a limited sample size, considering this past season was his initial starting year. Because uh, 2020, he played over a little over 330 snaps. Uh, but he did see plenty of action, though he didn't start many games during that year. Had a big out against Ohio State. But he does a good job of marrying receivers. He has fluid hips, like the hips be greasy. Short area quickness is good. Footwork is superb. And he's going to need... I am think he's going to need just uh, a little bit, a little bit more time when it comes to handling physicality that's i think that's by far his biggest area his biggest weakness is physicality we saw him against um mezzi the nc state receiver really struggle at consistently getting to the catch point or at least at least contesting the catch point against a big body receiver like that and then on top of that when it comes to his tackling uh he's he's is a very his tackling technique totally needs retooled. Uh, I would say he's kind of like a dive and drag type of style, except for it's not really much of a dive so much as like kind of a lunge. He plants his feet and he doesn't really like go anywhere with it. But it's it's just a wonky tackling style. Uh, I like that he squares up. <laughs> I'll say that, but. Uh, it does need work, but I like the length. I like the ball skills. Uh, he ended the year hot. Final three games, he allowed a completion rate of 25% for only 88 yards, no touchdowns. During that time, three interceptions, three pass breakups. He's going to test out well, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm curious what the long speed is with him because it, it just seems like his short area stuff, like how he mirrors receivers underneath and on the intermediate just kind of curious about um going downfield because again like um Amezi was taking this guy about 20 yards deep 
So I'm like kind of cons- I'm curious what Booth will test out speed wise. And then Trent McDuffie here at number three. Here at number three. Um, I like Trent McDuffie. I do. I just do. He's a high end, high end athlete. A lot of athleticism when it comes to Trent McDuffie. Used to run track back in high school. And I love the short area quicks. Probably some of the best Marin ability in this class. Uh, the movement skills are great. He's explosive outside, uh, like on breaks. Um, and then as a tackler, he's only missed six tackles through his whole career. I said I loved Emerson. I thought Emerson might be the best tackling corner in this class if we take out Trent McDuffie. I would like to see him be a bit more physical during the route, though I think there will be size and length concerns, especially length. We'll see how he, how he measures out at the, uh, at the combine, but I think part of that lack of physicality during routes is it deals a bit with his length, but he was a he was a shutdown corner the minute he stepped foot on campus for Washington. Over his career, he allowed a catch rate of forty four point four percent, five pass breakups this past season. Um, some people might question his ball skills. Quite frankly, he just don't throw the ball his way a lot of times. But I'm a huge fan. Got him as a top fifteen, and then top ten Ahmad Gardner here at number two. I know some of y'all are going to groan because y'all know who number one is, but traits, they're a thing. But Gardner, probably one of the best press man coverage corners in all of college football, 132 targets. He has never allowed a touchdown. He has allowed a completion percentage of 50, or 42.4%. He has nine interceptions, 17 pass breakups through his career. His play style, like he has insane length. I mean, at 6'3", you best believe it. I like that he added muscle because he was a bit wiry. He added muscle this year, got up to 200. Uh, and he, th- how, like, because he's another guy that plays a physical brand of football. But I would say this year, because coming into the year, what he allowed 14 penalties through his career prior to that time only ended up allowing two this year. He became much better with his hands, knowing when to hold and let go of receivers. Like He was just fabulous. I love how he uses his hands, keeps his hands active. He has the length to do so. I like that he put it on the bulk. Um, he isn't just, I won't say he isn't just a man coverage corner, though he's, because I think he's got the wingspan to really be a problem in zone, but he's just not tested in zone like he didn't play a lot of zone uh there particularly opposed to like a uh kobe Bryant, who actually kind of played a lot of zone on the opposite side and kind of being like a spot dropper and will like after 10 yards would just like kind of go and follow uh the receiver in his uh area but my garner hasn't been that he's been like i'm gonna man you up my friend uh, stiff hips, long speed. Again, those are just going to be questions asked at the combine. I'm curious how it pans out. And then Derek Steenley, and I'm, I know y'all going to groan, but listen, the physical tools, the athletic upside, like those are undeniable. It sucks. I get it. He hasn't played at least up to that standard in the past two seasons. The ankle injury, the leg injury. All on the same side, dating back to 2020 and then this year. Yeah, he needs a te- he needs a check out, but no one could deny the tools. He's a 4340 guy, 42 vertical uh inch vertical. He just he has the elite acceleration, the elite speed. His technique and press is freaking just amazing this guy i think you can really trust to shadow your number one receiver he's an ideal press man corner in the league can he play zone i think he can he just needs a better feel for it matter of fact let's talk about some of the areas he's weak at because i know a lot of y'all got a kick from devon uh me putting Devonte smith there as a weakness last time so i kept it there because quite frankly he was but uh Devontae smith took advantage of Stanley when he was a freshman and I thought in the second the 
the second time they faced and during Stanley's sophomore career, he did a much better job of kind of not shutting down Devontae Smith because that year Devontae Smith was not being shut down. But he did a good job of minimizing the damage. Uh, now let's talk about the opener, all right? Because then the other people, other people are going to talk about the UCLA game. And uh, oh, Kyle Phillips, he allowed that touchdown. Matter of fact, he got beat, and then he missed the tackle. <gasps> all right. Anyway, he was playing in the slot, right? Which makes sense. You want Stanley. Like playing the best receiver on the uh, the opposing team, it happened to be Kyle Phillips, who was in the slot. Though they were playing, it was off coverage. So first of all, Stanley, he's a press guy. He likes to be get his hands on his man. But it was not just off coverage, but it was a bit of a zone. And what happened is he he let Kyle Phillips. Basically, come underneath, and he passed him off too early. If that makes sense. Um, he passed him off too early. Like, I think he was just a few steps past the hash, and Stanley kind of like, kind of like paused to like pass him off, and that's when DTR chucked the ball. Stanley realized, oh crap, let me go make a tackle. Listen, corners—they're not always the best tacklers. I don't really care. Can they cover? Cool. If you're the type of person that's like, no, I need my corner to tackle. They must be a tackler. Then, okay, cool. Uh, hopefully they're good in coverage as well. But I'd rather my corner be good in coverage than be a solid tackler. But to be fair, yeah, it was it was kind of a scummy tackle. Because uh, he tackled him real high and just kind of went over the top of him. And it was just like, my dude, come on. My dude, come on. So there are those inconsistencies uh, but again, he was playing at a position in the slot, not playing press. And again, a guy that just needs to get better when it comes to, well, getting a feel for zone. And to be honest, I think being hurt the last couple of years has cost him that type of experience, which is a shame, but still the physical tools, the elite athleticism, if everything checks out well with the ankle, I'd be willing to take a shot on Derek Stanley. Cause I, again, he has those elite shutdown corner traits anyway that's it for the video go ahead do that youtube thing and as always until next time you be easy my friends later